We'll call the fifth. Whoa. We will call the fifth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Bird? Here. Bonet? Excused. Serta? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemir? Here. Perez? Here. Peterson? Here. Rindfleisch? Here. Sigali? Excused. Stefan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. 14 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Warner? I thank your honor. Move the minutes of move the minutes of last common council meeting be approved and the same standards entered on the record. I second. We have a motion before us and a second that the minutes of the previous council meeting stand approved under discussion. Here, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of allegiance, Alderman Stephan. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Stephan. Brother Nation, Steve. I have a letter dated May 18th to Mayor Schramm from City Clerk Patricia Losey advising that the, of her intention to retire from her position as City Clerk effective June 20, 2004. And that can be accepted and placed on file. What we will do with Pat's position is we will hold it open for the next two weeks for anyone interested in applying for the position. Um, if anyone wants to apply, please get your name to my office. And uh, then after the 20th, we will uh, make an announcement who will appoint. Of course, I'll appoint and the council will approve. So uh, hopefully we can get a, another city clerk. The appointment only goes until April. Yes, and the appointment only goes until April 5th. And that person being he or she will have to rerun for that office. Alderman Press. Thank you, Your Honor. I, being that the, Pat, uh, Ms. Losey's position is an elected position, is the mayor gets to point? Not Correct. The <coughs> Any other questions? Alderman Peterson. I just would like to say I've worked with Pat on both sides of the table, and I really enjoyed working with Pat these past 14 years. Thank you. We don't want you crying now, Pat. <laughs> don't say anything. Okay. Well, I too. Uh, Pat's not only been a very good friend, but she does an excellent job, and we surely are going to miss her. I hate to see her go, but I truly want to wish her the best of luck. She's retiring. She's moving out to Arizona, correct? Already bought a home out there, so she wants to go out where the weather is warmer. And good luck. Good luck on everything, Pat. Thank you. Best wishes. Thank you. Mayor's appointment, Steve. Um, the following appointments for your consideration to the Community Health Insurance Advisory Task Force. Ellen Schleicher, Jason Borden, Ed Surick, Jeff Squire, Michael Collard, Jeff Herman, Greg Wegeman, Michael Lanzer, and a DPW union representative um, to be appointed for terms running from June 7th of 04 and expiring June 30th of 05, signed by the mayor. <coughs> That will lie over. And Michael Schrader to be considered for appointment to the Board of Contractors Examiners to fill the unexpired term of Mark Winkle, whose term expires 43006. That will lie over. Oh, that one. Yes. Yeah, yeah it lies over also. Correct. Pete Streisick to be considered for the Board of Appeals to fill the unexpired term of Mark Winkle, which expires April 30, 2005. Pete Streisick will join the committee a second alternate. Richard Lindy will move from first alternate to full member, and Dave, excuse me, Dale Feld will move from second alternate to first alternate, signed by the mayor. That will I order. No. No. 
Okay. This is old. Okay, so that can be put on to all the appointments at okay. once. All the rest can be passed at Sully. And Robert Hurry be considered for the business improvement district to fill the unexpired term of Brian Olbink, which expires September 17, 2004. Cleo Messner to be considered for the business improvement district to fill the unexpired term of David Krieger, which expires September 16, 2005. Can you put up on his passage? And finally, uh, Robert Peterson be considered for the Group Health Insurance Committee to fill the unexpired term of Daniel Byrd, which expires April 18, 2005. Uh, it indicates that the committee requires a member from Salary and Grievance Committee. And that one can be put up on this passage. I need a motion. Second. Move to the second to approve the appointments under discussion. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. What was the first committee? I missed that one. The first committee was? Business Improvement District. Okay, is residency a requirement there? Business Improvement District. I don't no. think so. No? no? Okay. They, they have, have to have a business in the, in the city. Okay. Okay. We have a motion before us under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Bob. Before we get into tonight's hearing, we have one hearing, but before we get into that, we do have um, a gentleman from transit with us, and that is Joe Lamb. And Joe has an award from TMI 2004 Rodeo Division Championship. It's by the State Bus Rodeo, it's championship for Division One. This is the third time you won the state champion championship, Joe, and he was competing some of the best bus driving skills. So with that, and they also have a citation from my office, also from Ron McDonald, a citation for Community Service Award to Joe Lamb. With that, Joe, congratulations. Excellent job. good to recognize our employees in the city and when they do an excellent job. Again, congratulations. Good job. Tonight we have one hearing and that's rezoning the property located at 1416 and 1418 Erie Avenue. Any, wish, any interested persons wishing to be heard? Any interested persons wishing to be heard? Alderman Groff. And I'll move that the hearing be closed. Move to second that the hearing be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Public <coughs> form panel. Okay. Consent agenda 5 1 through 522. Alderman Warner. Thank you, thank you Your Honor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Second. Moved and second. All ROs be accepted and filed. All RCs be accepted and adopted. Ordinance, substitute ordinances be put upon their passage. Under discussion. Alderman Renflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I uh, ask uh, the pull forward 517 and take a separate vote on that. 517. Proceed. Any discussion on it? No discussion. Since I'm actually on that list, I wish to abstain separately. Okay. Separate vote on 517. I don't have enough signatures on the RFC. I have one. Uh, it's law and licensing. It's, oh, law and licensing. Who's ever? Yeah, he's not here. So would you help me, please? He's the only one who signed. <laughs> Alderman Groff. Um, while we're asking for abstentions, is it necessary to abstain if your name is on that list? I would advise doing that unless you want to call a division 
the question you don't vote on your own application, but I think it's wise to get in when your, your uh, own application is being acted on. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On 517, call the roll. Call the roll, Platt. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Abstain. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Abstain. Rindfleisch? Abstain. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 11 ayes, no nays, three abstentions. Motion passed. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, although there were no persons present for the uh, rezoning of the property at 1416, 1418 Erie Avenue, as a matter of principle, I'm still going to vote against it because I did state to the residents in the area that I would do so. Did you want a separate vote on that? I'll just do it during the. Then you're right voting now. for all the, no, no. on all okay. the consent. Okay, let's do it on this separately, please. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Um, that's number five four. Would you call the roll on that one? Seven. Serta. Graf, Manny, Montemayor, Aye. Perez, Aye. Peterson, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Stephan, no. Van Ankeren, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Bauman, no. Berg. No. 11 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carried. Alderman Warner. I think, Your Honor, I'd like to just speak on document 522. Okay. Just, just to say I had a lot of uh, people in my district that are impacted by this, and, and I'm glad the Public Works Committee was able to work on this with the wastewater <coughs> plan to get this done. Uh, it's a very important change in the joint sewage treatment agreement the city has with the town of Sheboygan. And at, at one time, some city residents were paying an upcharge to the town of Sheboygan that resulted in higher sewer bills than their counterparts in the city that did not have to share sewers with the township. Uh, this document rectifies that problem. It was worked out with the town of Sheboygan. And I guess I would just ask Tom if he can give me an estimate of when the residents that were affected by this will see that change on their sewer bill. It should hit their next billing cycle in uh, there. So it's about the same time, and I don't know what quarter to get billed on, but the next, the next bill, you should see it. Okay. Good. Thanks. There's no other discussion on documents. Pat, would you call the roll? Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 523 by Alderman Rindfleisch. From the Sheboygan Citizens Action Group regarding regarding guest memberships at the Sheboygan Yacht Club. Alderman Reinflesch. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that uh, the document be filed, placed on file. Okay. Move to the second document, placed on file, under discussion. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Last year, uh, there was a letter sent to uh, this committee, which was acted on and sent to the Ethics Board, um, discussing activities by some aldermen that uh, didn't name any names and didn't name any activities specifically. Uh, so there was therefore no one that could defend themselves uh, by these accusations. This one does not have a name actually attached to it. We know it's from the Sheboygan Action Group by the title, but there's no proof of that. Anybody can create a Yahoo account with that name on there. I was hoping that if someone's making these accusations that through the public forum they'd be able to speak on these accusations, but no one uh, appeared here either. So much like you know, there is somebody here named that needs to defend themselves, perhaps, but there's no one actually making an accusation right now. So as such, I move to file it. Alderman Peterson. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. I guess I'd like to say, you know, we have a comp membership in the chamber, and I've taken advantage of many programs I pay for, and meals and, you know, dinners and things like that. I think this is nothing different than that. It it's really broadens our base of, of understanding and support with community groups, but to me it's no different than the chamber. We have a, we have a comp membership. We pay for the events we go to. I think that's a fair and, and good way to, to solve it. Thank you. Thank you. Ed Surik, uh, could you explain that letter that came in? There were some inaccurate quotes in there. Okay, I'd like, <clears throat> like to point out, uh, number one, I, I'm a member of the Sheboygan Yacht Club in, in good standing, and <clears throat> did get a copy of the uh, letter sent to all the persons and uh, a little disturbed about it. I did talk to uh, Mike Rosh, he's our Commodore, and he asked me to convey the message that he had, uh, this is not a, a complimentary membership, it is only a guest, a guest pass. And that, make it short and sweet, uh, there are no privileges. He said that, um, you infer from the letter that, that someone had tried to get a hold of him. He said he had received no phone calls, there was no emails, no letters to him, no one had attempted to contact him. Uh, something else in the letter concerns us, concerns me, it says that, the Yacht Club refused to respond to our emails requesting information. I talked to Charlotte Litica, and Charlotte's the office manager there, and she said she received no such emails. Um, it goes on to mention, too, about not getting information. Talk with Steve Madsen, who is the club manager, and he's not the bartender, as the, as the letter states. And Steve said that a member of the Sheboygan, who, divided, who identified himself as a member of the Sheboygan Citizens Action Group, came into. Uh, him and he said that he had a, a meeting with the Commodore at 2 o'clock and requested to see him and Steve said the Commodore is fishing up north. I don't know what you're talking about. But then anyway, we did ask him about this type of membership and Steve said, you know, it is a, a guest membership. Uh, there are no voting privileges. Uh, there's no dock privileges. You can't vote on any, and you cannot be on any committees. And there are 30 other such um, guest privileges, uh, uh, sent out by the, by the uh, uh, Yacht Club. It, it disturbed me a little bit. Um, you know, I guess the mayor is kind of the ambassador to the city, and, and if he is, chooses to go to the Yacht Club or the Elks Club or any other organ or some religious group and have dinner or join, that uh, he shouldn't be condemned for that. Uh, I myself, and, and uh, if I'm at dinner at the Yacht Club with my wife and, and family, and, and, the, and the mayor's there, I'd maybe be glad to see that the mayor's attending the Yacht Club. So, and I told a couple other members, and they felt it was perfectly fine. Just, it disturbs me that we get these, these accusations that really have no basis in truth. And the, the irony of the whole thing is, the subject of the letter is a question of ethics. And I'm questioning whose ethics. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. OK. He moved for a question, Bill. All in, all in favor of filing? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Five twenty four to twice five twenty six to be referred. Five twenty seven through forty eight to be referred. <coughs> five forty nine through five fifty lie over. Five fifty one through 55 to be referred. 553, there's a change in there. It goes to Redevelopment Authority, not City, not city Plan Commission. 556, by law and licensing, denying beverage operator license 5624 based on failure of applicant to cooperate with the committee and the applicant's Habitual criminal record, long licensing. Who's handling that? Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, the council referred to law and licensing RC number 3810405 by Public Protection and Safety and RO number 5930304 by the city clerk regarding various license applications for the period ending June 30th, 2004 and June 30th, 2005. Law and Licensing recommends that Beverage Operators License Number 5624 for Stephen M. Rathel be denied based on his failure to cooperate with the committee and his habitual criminal record. We have a motion before us in a second. Alderman Manning. 
He didn't make a motion. I move that um, the oh, license be denied. See if he's here. I looked earlier. He was not. Who he is not here. Mike Order. Okay. Alderman Order. Okay. Uh, Stephen did not show up for the meeting on the 25th and has not responded to overtures. This has uh, been more than the second time. Okay. With that, would you call the roll, please? Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemere? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Ben Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 557 by law and licensing denied beverage operator license 6362 based on the applicant's criminal record, making him ineligible for a license. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Council did refer back to law and licensing, um, RC number 190405 and RO number 40405. And we did meet and discuss, and he was present at the May 25th meeting. And uh, Assistant Attorney Chuck Adams clarified the fact that he is ineligible by due of his uh, criminal record. So I move that the license be denied. Moved and seconded. License be denied. Under discussion. So you should uh, clarify for the record whether Mr. Crispin is present. He's not here. And one other thing. Okay, go ahead. Uh, just to clarify, um, you know, there was some confusion at the last meeting. Uh, some of it was my doing because I wasn't aware of the specific uh, uh, convictions on Mr. Christman's uh, record. But uh, it ties into the, uh, the, the statutory requirements for eligibility for a license. Generally, there is a, uh, it, it says right out in the statutes that if you have a felony, you're ineligible, but then uh, beyond that, there's a whole other series of law dealing with uh, discrimination against uh, a number of things, one of which is arrests and criminal records, conviction records. Uh, and there's a series of cases dealing with the, you know, you see it a lot in employment, whether you hire a person, whether they've got a particular uh, 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 crime in their background or not. And, uh, Generally, the law is that, uh, as it comes, as it relates to liquor licensing, is that if, even if it's a felony, it needs to be substantially related to the licensed activity. That's the standard that the courts have adopted. However, in the last about five years, uh, there was some new legislation added that's part of the liquor licensing law that, that uh, gives a list of about four different convictions that are generally related to possession or distribution of controlled substances that says, irrespective of the, the discrimination laws on criminal convictions and, and arrest records, if you have convictions of these things, you are not eligible for a liquor license. That's basically what it says. So that's, that's what we've got here. So I wanted to clarify that for the council. I know there was some confusion at the last meeting. Okay. Alderman Groff. Uh, he answered my question. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Steve, occasionally somebody, depending upon their particular felony, may still get a bartender's license. That's right. The, the mere fact of a felony in and of itself uh, is generally, unless it's one of those designated ones, that uh, you've got to look beyond that. You've got to you know, look into the circumstances of it. And the standard is it needs to be substantially related to the licensed activity. So there must be more additions to that particular rule that says if you, if you have a felony, you cannot get a liquor li uh, uh, be a bartender. No, get a bartender's license. So there must be more additions to that particular phrase. Well, that, that phrase in the statute was never changed. That still says that. But as I say, there's you know, case law that that applies arrest and conviction record discrimination kind of on top as a, okay. a judicial layer over and above that. And uh, I think as a legislative response to, to the courts saying, you know, it's kind of, you got to look at each fact and circumstance that came out and the, the legislature said, 
That may be true, but in these particular cases, you're not going to be eligible for a license period. So it's, yes. okay. uh, it's a little battle, I think, between the legislature and the courts as to uh, eligibility for those sorts of things and what, what factors you look at. Thank you, Steve. Okay. If there's another discussion, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Mondemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 558, there's a change on there too. It will go to Plan Commission, not Public Works. 558 through 562 to be referred. 463, matters laid over. Resolution by Alderman Warner, amending resolution which added, added the chairman of the committee to hold as a member of the Strategic Plan Committee. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. Uh, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. <coughs> it's moved and seconded resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, historically the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee was comprised of the five members of the standing committees, the five chairpersons of the standing committees. When we went to four standing committees, in order to keep the balance of having the, the five people on that, the committee, the whole chairman was put onto it. Now that we're back into the five standing committees, that's why the committee, the whole chairman, has taken off of Strategic Fiscal Planning. And uh, that's what this resolution will do. Just another discussion, Pat. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 447, a resolution by Alderman Groff, Stefan Berg, Manny, and Monty Mayer, authorizing transfer appropriations in a 2004 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that resolution, uh, which is 200405, and 210405, which is also a resolution to authorize a transfer of funds to hire seasonal summer employees in the Parks Department, as well as resolution 220405, which is a resolution to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget. I would move that all three resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. Moved and second, the three resolutions be put upon their passage. Under discussion. <coughs> Just another discussion. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Perez, Aye. Peterson, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Stephan, Aye. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Warner, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Graf, Aye. Manny. Aye. I'm sorry, Manny? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 464 RC by Public Works recommending accepting the donation of, the, of a sculpture from Dr. Graf and his committee to be placed on the rotary. Alderman Bauman. And thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that the report of ex a committee be accepted and filed. Adopted? Adopted or filed? Adopted. Um, right. And adopted, my apology. And who did the second? It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted under discussion. Okay, Your Honor. Go ahead. Okay, if I could, please. Thank you. The uh, sculpture that is being donated, uh, there were a long discussion, I guess, by Dr. Groff, Dr. Grapf and his group. Hard to say sometimes, <laughs> okay. I guess. And needless to say, um, and then was brought to the Public Works Committee on two separate occasions. And we finally did get to see photographs of the sculpture which he is going to be donating. And of course, it would be brought into our city from the East Coast. According to the way we worded this, at no cost to the city that they are solely responsible for, for transportation and shipping costs of this. It's actually gonna be arriving on two separate semi-trucks. It is that large and heavy. And it'll be placed down at the rotary intersection for approximately two to five years and then of course be removed uh, again at their expense. Okay, Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I was just curious to see if there's any other stipulations in the agreement. What kind of agreement do we have? What if they don't pick it up in two and a half years, three years? Who's responsible for it? Maintenance, damage, liability. There's all kinds of things that can happen. I don't know if you're going to drop a three-ton piece of sculpture. You're not going to be too quick to pick it up either. So I, I think these are some of the questions that we need to probably work out also. And if they haven't, I'd ask that we probably go back and, and take a look at that because this is a big piece of, of uh, art. and. It, probably a valuable one too for these people, so I'd, I'd want to make sure that we're covered when it's accepted. Tom? 
Can you answer that? This is just a voice vote. We talked about the viability of the sculpture uh, in public works, and uh, I'm not sure if, the, if Dr. Groff hasn't gotten back to me, but is the sculpture on loan to us, or is it actually giving it to us? I think it's just on loan to us, so it's right. up to that group. They're responsible for the damage to it. It's not ours. Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, though. There is some cost for a base, right? We have to put a base? Well, we, have to th we have to throw in maybe a dump truck load of sand to cover up some conduits and some uh, foundations that are there for that sail sculpture, that steel and fluorescent or neon tube uh, sail sculpture is supposed to go on there. That, that's going to probably three or four dollars worth of sand we have to dump in there. Okay. Like, we would take care of that, but okay. uh, everything else is on there, nickel. Okay. Just so there is some cost there to the city, but not much. Okay. <coughs> Voice vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> 458, a general ordinance by Alderman Warner, Vanderweel, Reinflesch, and Serta, relating to no parking period so as to delete the portions of north side of New Jersey Avenue near South 14th Street from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., except Saturdays, Sundays, and holiday regulations. Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion that general, general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Move to the second to general ordinance will be put upon its passage. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this change was requested at the Public Protection and Safety Meeting on May 12th by the Police Department Traffic Division. Uh, Sergeant Tarkowski was contacted by the Public's, Public Works Department regarding a difficult and dangerous situation on this section of New Jersey Avenue uh, during school hours. Uh, in the interest of public safety, it is the Public Protection and Safety Committee's recommend, recommendation that this change be made. Uh, this will be in effect on weekdays only from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m and allow regular parking at all other times. It seems that the size of the public works vehicles that have to go down New Jersey Avenue, I'm not sure if it's teachers or whoever's parking along there, and the width of that street, it's uh, a real problem for them to stay without going on two sides of the street and making it down that way. So uh, this will help them be able to make that corner and that turn a little easier and uh, only impact the residents five days a week, seven to four. Thank you. There's another discussion. Would you call the roll? Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wongerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Other matters. 563 will go to Public Works. 64 will go to Finance. 65. We'll go to Plan Commission. You have to get used to this agenda. You didn't make this one out. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Different. No, that's okay. Uh, 66, City Plan Commission. 67 to City Plan Commission. 68, Plan Commission. 69, Public Works. 70, Special Marina Committee. So we got them right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And 71 can be accepted and adopt, adopted. Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. 571 is an RC by Public Works recommending, uh, uh, actually, okay, filing the uh, document submitting a communication from Gene Stangle regarding problems with the condition of the corner near his home. I then move that this be uh, accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion before us and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Wongman. Uh, just a personal note, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, before Alderman Bauman uh, adjourns, no, we're still as you know, last month was a pretty tough month. And it was like having another family, the way the members of City Hall and the various department heads in your office and everybody in City Hall responded. They said a lot. They shed a lot of light into a very dark period in my life. And I'm really very proud to be a member of the City Hall family, if you want to call it that. So I just wanted to give everybody my very special thanks. Thank you, Bill. And we're proud to have you as a member. Okay, we have a motion before us in a second. If there's another discussion, I don't need a roll call, right? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Other matters? Oh, excuse me, Alderman Warner. I'm sorry. Thank you, I just want to confirm with Pat. Uh, you said the 20th? 
Okay, you see, this we is your last. We some more documents. You want to take care of those first? Sure. But is this going to be your last meeting? This is my last meeting. Okay. Uh, so before adjournment. Yes. Steve? 572 is a resolution uh, authorizing the purchasing agent to enter a contract for buildings and property insurance coverage. That will go to finance. 573 is a resolution authorizing the appointment of a study committee to address the concern of rising health care costs for employers and employees in both the private and public sectors. And that will lie over. 574 is a resolution accepting the drainage easement from the Sheboygan Area School District for drainage purposes in, under, and along part of their property. Public Works. Alderman Warner, back to you. I think our, I guess, I thought it was going to be two weeks and I expected that meant you were going to be here for another council meeting, so I didn't really prepare anything to say, so I'm going to have to just say thank you very much for all the help you've been. When I first came on the council, as with all of us, the first place you have to go to find out how to get around this place and understand what your documents mean, when to pick them up, and what the motions mean and everything come right from Pat. She knows it inside and out, and I tell you, we're losing a really great city clerk. And uh, it's always been a pleasure working with you. Thank you. I'll second that. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I, too, wish to um, extend my thanks to Pat for all, all that she did. But I'm happy that she's going because normally if I help out at the voting polls, and I do something wrong, she calls me the next day about it, and I don't have to worry about her calling me, and hopefully she won't tell anybody There'll else. Be somebody else calling me. <laughs> Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. Pat, also, I too would like to thank you very much. You've given me a lot of guidance in the time that I've been up here. And also with the fact that you do live in my district, or it won't be much longer, I won't be able to go to your house anymore to have you sign my nomination papers. So. I'll be losing one signature there. Thank you. Thank you. Oliver Wagman. Just, just a note, I want to wish Pat good luck also. And I thank you for all the times you let me come in and rummage through all those dusty old files. And the girls helped me climbing around on the ceiling, finding, reading books that nobody had read for the last 200 years. And I'm sure when Pat gets to Arizona, everything will be reorganized out there and they'll be in just in fine shape. So sure. good luck to you, Pat. Thank you. Oliver Serta. Pat, I just want to thank you for giving me a warm welcome and your integrity in the office is evidenced by the precedence that you've shared and the ladies that I've worked with. So your legacy will continue. Thank you very much. I wish I could say more to all of you, but I can't. Move to adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> Move to a second to adjourn. There's other discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye.